Welcome and thank you for joining me. This is Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I want to talk to you about the fact that in my understanding and experience, I want to say that to me there is no such thing as a single mother, emotionally. Because the mother will surrogate her children to make up any supply, emotional supply, that's lacking from male company. That's what she'll do. She doesn't need the male, essentially, because her core values are usually connected maternally to her children, which is where her safety is, which is where her um, heart is. But there is such a thing as lonely mothers and in many ways it works out in a black widow type scenario where they'll engage a male um, and start to emotionally extract from him and physically until she's had her fill what you'll find is usually the children will be used to sabotage the situation when she's had enough. She'll make no effort to resolve or reconcile anything. She'll just let havoc run wild. This is how narcissism works. It's all a form of narcissism because it's sabotaging um, good intention and healthy relationships. That's how narcissism works. It abandons what it's committed to. It sabotages what's good. That's why a lot of single mothers end up lonely, bitter, twisted, and um, in emotional incest with their children because their children usually, by uh, being disabled to the point where they still need their mother even at adult ages emotionally as well because they can't function with anybody outside the mother's influence I mean it really does wreck everything uh, narcissistic behavior in terms of um, voluntary abandonment without legitimate reason of a relationship now, there's a form of on-flow consequential results that come from this. And what it will be like is a pack of birds that are fighting over a chip, only to lose the chip into the water for a fish to eat or something like that. They harass each other to the point where what they were trying to accomplish is sabotage within the family group um, as well. They never seem to be able to dig themselves out of the hole. There's always somebody with a need. There's always somebody with um, a complaint. There's always somebody with an emotional problem or a, or a situation that they're sulking about. There's always some kind of drama playing off in the background and what this does is attract the narcissist because they want to rescue the weak that gives them assurance that they'll have the security of that person being there and so this is common this happens all the time you'll see it in these families there's never rest there's always a drama that you know Putting, cooking dinner has to have a drama attached to it and these women become, they say they want peace but they become bored if you bring stability into their lives they'll just drain you of what they want and then when they're full they'll allow the drama inside their family dynamic to harass you to torment you to be rude to you and hostile until you give in and go away. And of course, you'll get the tears and all the rest of it. And, oh, it's very well done. Believe me. Very well done. 
the proof of this is if the mother isn't doing anything to pull the children into line or set up boundaries or make some way in which she's protecting the relationship. She doesn't want the relationship. She's had a fill. She's content with what she's got. She's used to taking chances and being on her own and finding somebody else. You're not as valuable as you think you are to the narc single mother. And it's covert. It's very covert because the person will come across as loving and kind, and but underneath, they start to with they they are, they are not in the same mindset that you are, where you're happy and content. You want to build the relationship and see if something positive can come out of this with with um, longevity and productiveness and security and contentment and all those things that you can gain from a positive, well-functioning, loving, caring, give, take, care and share relationship. I've seen too many mothers in surrogate relationships with their male children and uh, daughters as well, where the roles of authority have switched so dramatically that you could also almost say that the parent is the child and the child is the parent. And in some cases, it's very clear that that is what's manifesting. Where the child's just directing the parent in such a way as they're just a slave to every whim of the child. <coughs> so, you have to be well aware, psychologically aware, of what you're doing when you meet these people. I've met highly intelligent well-positioned women who have come in to go, you know, on a date or walk along the boardwalk. The next minute, within an hour or so, you're in bed making love or at least having sex, I would say more having sex. And they've, they've told you, you know, how they feel and all this stuff about themselves. And the next thing... No, they don't want to... They, they go back to their cave. Now, you've got to be aware that it's not because you've done anything wrong or, or, or anything like that. This is the character of the narc single mother. She's been wrecked, abused. I had one lady that slept in a single bed for 10 years. 10 years in a marriage. I mean, I wouldn't last two days with that kind of behaviour. Uh, there's other women that have been abused by men that have been out on alcohol. They never come into that place where they decided that nurturing the woman was more important than having their substance. This turns women into very broken vessels. But I've had women that have had men with alcohol and they've traded off by having some other kind of vice like medication or dope or some other kind of vice but it's not fixing anything it's not helping anything it's just making the hole deeper for these people and again when the relationship between the parents is dissolved due to dysfunction and um, a lack of focus and effort on the relationship itself they surrogate a child or several children whoever they can get their hands on when they go into these depressive uh, consequential moods that um, bad choices make put put us into see a, narc a narcissist needs love and emotions like everybody else and they have love and, and emotions like everybody else they just don't have the capability of looking after that love that they're receiving, the supply that they're see receiving in a way in which anything fruitful or good in terms of longevity can come out of it. And there's an element of human nature related to this where human nature is destructive by nature for all different reasons, spiritual reasons, um, and there's demonic elements to this as well, where if a person isn't 
constantly um, being aware and developing themselves in these disciplines, spiritual, emotional, physical, intellectual, then by nature of the universe, they will be pulled down. They will be undermined. And they will age quicker than what they ought to. Single mothers, let me say to you, they are not single. I haven't met one yet that has truly been single. They've had a reliance on their children that has not been maternal, it's been surrogated. Where their emotional bond with the child has passed from a healthy maternal, boundary protected relationship into what would be only described as a parent uh, adult to adult, excuse me, adult to adult relationship without boundaries in which the child now has been, this can range from all ages up to, you know, 50, 60 years old. There was a gentleman that made a comment on a video the other day that was 54 year old and said he'd never left his mother. 54 years old. And I would suggest that the mother made it in such a way that he couldn't. This is how powerful a narcissistic mother can be. She does have to have, she has to have a supply that she is able to turn to regardless of the mistakes she makes or the things that she does to ruin a relationship with a male. Because a single mother is a single mother for a reason, whether it be her fault or not. And that puts her in a position in the pecking order at the bottom. And as they get older and as they get more set in their ways and more hard and more masculine, because they have to be if there's no male around. And um, what single mothers don't realise is men that are um, emotionally sabotaged by these narcissistic mothers, their wisdom's limited, their masculinity's limited, they usually have no relationship that lasts with a woman themselves. Um, and the bond between them is so toxic that nobody can stay around anyway if they've got any sense of uh, something's wrong between the mother and the child and usually it's very clear and it's very toxic and it doesn't take long for the filth of it to start to impact somebody that's trying to have a relationship with one of these parents or child children you have to be very very aware of how all this stuff can work because it's a part of the majority today it's a part of the masses today it's something that we really need to be aware of as men and women as well like women should be aware that men are in most cases completely dysfunctional and unaware of themselves it's the women that make out they're aware of themselves but underneath they're not underneath like in one case i experienced she was the child to two boys uh, and the supplier to their dysfunction and the enmeshment was so dysfunctional and toxic they were never going to get anywhere ever because they were disabling themselves emotionally to be able to do that and their habits and things which they chose to do amongst themselves was never going to allow them really to get anywhere anyway and I'm not saying these are bad people, I'm just saying this is how life can work out. And you know, we're on limited borrowed time, we've got a limited amount of time. And it's not to be wasted, you can sit there with these people and say, look, I'm not playing games, I've got limited time, I'm bringing the best version of myself to you, I will present that to you on every occasion. And they'll go along with that and then all of a sudden, out comes the narc and everything starts to digress and withdraw and all the games start and that's when you've got to go nope I will not give any more of my time to this and leave 
because it won't change. They'll just keep you hanging like a scarecrow in a paddock until they want to come and do something with you. They'll just keep, give you enough supply to keep you around. And the rest of it will be torment, frustration, loneliness. I've never been as lonely in a relationship as what I've been with a narcissistic, lonely mother. Because their emotions are too tied up with their children. They, they'll use you as a masculine source, a physical and emotional temporary masculine source, but then they'll return back to their hive, their cave, and get on with their life with their children. The children won't want you around, you're an outsider. So it's very complicated, it's very, um, it is very discernible, but you have to have your wits about you and understand how these things work. This is not about all lonely women with children. It's not about that, but if it's coming to your attention that this might be something that you're involved in and it's causing you torment and even depression, anxiety and other destructive thoughts. That's the purpose of this video. It's not to criticise women. They're beautiful things, women. But it is to bring to your attention that these things are real and you can protect yourself from them. This is Dr. Jason W. Morrison, theologist on the central coast, New South Wales, Australia, overlooking Brisbane Water at Gosford, near Central Coast Stadium, Leagues Club and uh, Park. It's such a beautiful place here. I'm blessed to be able to live here. Thank you for joining me and, as always, bye for now.